Hey everyone, long time no see. It's Nicole, in case you've forgotten me, it's been a month. I don't really have any excuses, except... Fuck Donald Trump! Yeah, nigga, fuck Donald Trump! Um, but yeah, uh, I'm here to film my February wrap-up. Uh, I haven't made a video since my January wrap-up, so hopefully next month I'll be making a few more videos than just wraps, but we'll see. I got a lot of reading done this month, especially at the beginning half. As is becoming the norm for this year, apparently, uh, I read most of these on my Kindle from the library, so I don't have them with me, which is very strange. Um, I'm using... Uh, I forgot whose document it is, but it's like the read many books like Google sheet thing and it like is tra it tracks how many books you read and like the format and genre and stuff and it's like 60% digital books which is so strange because I think I read like one <laughs> digital book last year should I put this on the ground? that doesn't seem like a good idea can I put it here? There we go. Okay, the first book that I read this month, I do have it with me, and it is March Book One by John Lewis, Andrew Aiden, and Nate Powell. And this is a graphic novel about um, John Lewis's uh, introduction into the civil rights movement when he was a young man. John Lewis is a congressman in uh, I've got these designs. Alabama. I don't know which state, but one of, one of the states. And when he was really young, he got introduced to MLK and all of those folks because he wanted to go to an all-white college. And yeah, it's sort of the introduction to this. So this is a three-part graphic novel. I have the other two. For some reason, I didn't read them this month. I was like, I didn't want to like rush through them, but then I ended up just putting them aside. So hopefully next month I'll finish them. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's um, it's definitely you can tell the writing is for a younger audience that's not really familiar with the civil rights movement. But I think that's really smart, especially now. It's like a perfect time for this to come out. And if I had any younger, if you have any like younger people in your lives, definitely get this for them. I think it's really good. And I think like schools should be teaching this because like, yeah, it was just it had a lot of good info in it and also really good art. Next I read um, So Much For That Winter by Dorth Norris, I think. Um, it's two novellas and they were translated from a language. Danish. That's the language, right? Okay. Um, yeah, they're translated from Danish, so it's a very different format. Um, and I started reading this and I thought it was Heartbreaker by Marissa Mayer, which I read immediately after. Um, so that was going to be short stories, but it's, it was something else. I don't know how I mix them up. They're very different. Um, yeah, it's the first novella. I like that one a lot more. It was a lot, it was a little longer. Um, and in it, each sentence, like, starts on a new line. Um, and they're very short sentences. So that was a really cool format. It took me a little bit to get into it, but it was a really strong story. It was about this girl who was a musician and her boyfriend had just dumped her and she was like going through some hard times. Um, yeah, and she was, it was just really nice. And the second one uh, was similar in that it was list, lists. So it would be like one and then a line. That one didn't feel as effective, I think because I just read the other one, but maybe if you had read them separately, not one after the other, it would have been effective, but it was just a little shorter, and I was like, i just seen this, so now there's numbers in front of it, so. But I definitely recommend it if you want to check out um, a different type of story. And I don't think I've ever read anything translated from Danish, so that was cool. And then the next thing I read was Heartbreaker Stories by Marissa Mayer. I'm pretty sure that's how you say her name. Her name is spelled very interestingly. And 
I kept forgetting her spot, but I'm pretty sure it's just Marissa May. You heard about it from... Who did I hear about it from? Oh, Portal on the Pages. So, it's a collection of short stories, and they're all very sexual and very dark. This is her first short story collection. She's been published in magazines and stuff. Um, this is her first collection. And uh, it was really interesting because all of the roles were kind of reversed. So there would be a story with like an older man and a young woman, but the young woman would be the one in control. Or like a child. Um, and they were just switched. And I thought that was really interesting. It made it like very... Like the, the plots were like very gross and like hard to read, but I she did something really interesting by switching those power dynamics. So I thought that was really cool and she's definitely someone to look out for in the future. And then I read Rat Queen's Volume 1, which is a comic book. Uh, I got it from the library. This I've been wanting to read for a while, everyone tells me to read it. And people described it as D and D. So I like an all all female D and D, so I was assuming it would alternate between people playing D and D, and then their D and D characters. But instead, it's just a D and D like world, where it's all these badass ladies. Um, and I liked it. All the characters were really cool. But I thought it was going to be switching back and forth, and I was like, "That's so cool! I don't. I've never read a comic book that's about Dungeons and Dragons." I think I'll read more of it because I like badass ladies killing people. And the next book I read was my first arc, and it was very exciting to get it. I like signed up for NetGalley, and I was like, they're not going to give me anything, like, I don't have that many followers, they're, why would they give me any books? And then I got all the ones I requested, which was really exciting. Um, I've only finished one of them so far. Most of them are poetry books, which makes me happy. Um, but yeah, this one is The Woods Are On Fire, um, new and selected poems by Fleeta. Fleta Brown Jackson. Pretty sure that's how you say it. It might be Fleta. And this is just kind of a mass collection of all of her works from over the years. And then there's some new ones at the end as well. And um, her poetry was not exactly my style, but it was really cool to see her transformation over the years. I haven't read too many poetry collections, which like are there whole works. I mean, I have Anne Sexton's and Sylvia Plath, and Anne Sexton's like one of my favorite poets, so that's great to see her growth. But I, I haven't really read that many other ones, um, especially with a, a newer poet. Um, so it was cool to see her change, and I feel like I really got to know her, which was really neat. The next book I read is Woman Race in Class by Angela Davis. I had been wanting to get, um, Freedom is a Constant Struggle, which is her newest book, but it kept being out of the library. I, I actually ended up buying it um, last week. There was an art book fair here in LA, but I got that there, but um, I couldn't get that book at the library, but I ended up getting this one, which is one of her classic texts um, about feminism, and it really goes back to the beginning and is talking about first wave feminism. And just shows you like how racist it was, <laughs> like super racist. So she kind of started there. She spent a lot of time in like the eight, like the Civil War to the twenties. Um, but then she delved a little bit into current times. Although this book was published in the nineteen eighties, so like that's like as current as it gets. Um, and this was my first like book that I read by Angela Davis. I've read some of her essays. And her writing is, like, really approachable, um, especially for such a historical text, but it was very easy to read. The next book I read was This Beauty, House of Penance, by Peter J. Tomasi, Ian Bertram, and Dave Stewart. Um, I don't know what else they've done, but this was part of the comics experience Graphic Novel of the Month Club, Winchester Mystery House. And if you're not from Northern California, you might have no idea what that is. But it's basically this weird house that just has a bunch of doors that lead to nothing and like really tiny rooms and just like this really weird house. And 
this tells the story behind it, but like with ghosts and stuff. So basically, there's this woman, Sarah Winchester, who married a man who kind of um, was the heir to this giant gun company, the Winchester Guns Rifles, I think. And her husband died, and then their baby died shortly after. And she was a mess. And so she moved to San Jose and decided to build a house. And uh, she built the house really strange, just with like all these doors leading nowhere. And this book and some sources say she was doing that so the ghosts would be confused and they couldn't get her. Um, the ghosts of like her husband and baby. And other people say that she was just not an architect, so she didn't know how to build a house. Um, they both make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, and then there was that, the big earthquake in like 1914 or something? Yeah, the big San Francisco earthquake. And it kind of like melted the house and like a bunch of it fell apart. Um, so yeah, that's about this, but with like a bunch of ghosts and it's really bloody. And it's beautiful. So. Also, if you've never been to the Winchester Mystery House, you should go. Um, I haven't been there since I was a child, but it's a lot of fun. Alright, and then I read Monstrous Issue 9. I'm too lazy to get my single issues, because I put them away immediately. Um, but yeah, this... Monstrous is getting great. If you're not reading Monstrous, what are you doing? You should read it. It's about a cool one-armed lady who's possessed by a demon and she's trying to figure out what's going on. And it's great. And she's really mean all the time. And the art's beautiful. And we're finally, like, figuring out some answers to the mystery. So, it's very exciting. And the next book I read was The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson. And Maggie Nelson is a writer about of, like, kind of philosophical and art pieces. She's a very like strange writer, very much like a avant-garde creative writer. And this book came out a couple years ago and everybody was loving it. Especially at my school because um, a lot of my teachers there, who's was in San Francisco, a lot of my teachers there were like friends with her. And some of them are mentioned in here which was cool. Um, but this book is about her relationship with her partner who is transitioning into a man. and about their attempts to have a child, and then also just intersection, interjected with uh, thoughts about art and philosophy and stuff. And I thought it was very well written. Um, and it's a short little book, and I want to read more of her books. And then I read Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. This book is translated from Spanish, and <clears throat> it's by this Mexican writer who's pretty well known in Mexico. Um, and it is about this woman, uh, Makina, who needs to cross the border to get her brother, who has gone to America, uh, to like claim some land or something. And he's been gone for a while. And she's in charge of the switchboards. They still have like a really old telephone system. Um, yeah. So it's just about different crossings, and it's a short little book. But I thought the writing was really neat, and I definitely want to read more of his books. I don't know if there's any more translated, but um, I think he's a really great writer, really strong. And the next book I read was a book of poetry, and that is Life on Mars by Tracy K. Smith. And this is a book that I've been wanting to read for a while. It came out actually in 2011. I thought it was a little more recent, but it was like gaining a lot of hype a couple of years ago. And this is uh, just about Mars and like space. It's like very much like a science fictiony um, poetry collection. And a lot of stuff about David Bowie, which was a little sad because it was written before he passed away. Um, but yeah, I thought she was a strong writer. It wasn't like my favorite collection that I've read this year, but I've read like a lot of really strong collections this year. But I thought she was good, and I definitely love to check out some more books by her. And then I read Quantum Lyrics by Elizabeth Shoulder. Schuler, just kidding. Um, and I ordered this ebook from my library, 
but I thought it was a different Quantum Lyrics, I'll put a picture here, um, by A. Van Jordan, who's this famous um, poet, and I thought it was by him, and it turned out to be by this lady, who's like a, a nurse, and she made this poetry book, and it was very short, but it was like really nice, I liked it. Um, uh, it was like a very pleasant surprise. <laughs> then I read my first buddy read with Angelica over at Mercury Calling, and we read Breakfast of Champions by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, this I think is her first Vonnegut, and this is my second. I read Slaughterhouse Five, but we're thinking of rereading again, so um, rereading Slaughterhouse Five that is. And let's see. This was not my favorite Vonnegut. Obviously, I read like his best one first, but this one, I believe this is one of his later ones, and it's about Kilgore Trout, who is this character who kind of crops up in a lot of his books, who's um, a science fiction writer who writes like really bad science fiction basically, and he is like invited to this art show, and there's this um, car dealer who reads his book and then thinks it's real and about him and kind of goes crazy and it's told in this very strange style where it kind of goes back and forth like you know something bad's gonna happen and it keeps mentioning that but then it doesn't happen until like the very end and uh, we both felt like the first half was very strong um, but basically like Kurt Vonnegut shows up to this art show and I don't know, I don't really like when writers are like present in the book, but I mean, he did a good job of it. There's a lot of characters in here that show up in his other books, so I think if I had read more of his books, I might appreciate this more. There's some fun ones coming up. Almost done, four left. Next I read Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Crystal. And this one took me a little while to read. It was like very long, and this is something I've noticed, like I don't really read YA, but I read, <coughs> what's it called? I don't know, that other way. book. Um, and I just noticed they're like so long now. I'm like, why are they so long? They don't need to be that long. But yeah, um, I think it's like a three stars, I think. I went through like a lot of different stages during this book. At the beginning, I was very, very skeptical. Um, just because there was all these reports, and they had very casual language, and I was like, I don't think that this person would be writing so casually in this technical report, and I didn't like it, because it wasn't, like, realistic. Uh, I like hard sci-fi, so I was like, where's the science? Where is this? And I was worried that <coughs> they were gonna, like, have a hacker. But like, not know anything about computers. But I think they did the research. It seemed like they were trying to make like the dialogue really fun, but I don't think they really needed that. Um, Katie, is that how you say her name? She was great. I'm gonna try to speak quicker because my voice is dying right now. Uh, uh, but Katie's great. I love her. Ezra's like, whatever. He can just go away. The like AI turning, this might be a sp spoiler coming up, I don't know. When the AI turns evil, I'm like, we've seen this like a million times, you gotta do better. And then it started making all these like Tumblr y pictures. It was very silly. But it like grabbed my attention, I guess. But it took way too long. Like, the first half should have been like half that way. It did not need to be that long. The next book I read is Prelude to Bruise by Saeed Jones. It's a poetry book about being black and gay in the south. And it was great. And I'm just keep it at that because I'm dying. <laughs> and then, oh, this might take a little while. I read Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca Solnit. This is a book I've been wanting to read all of her books for so long. And I did not like this book. <laughs> I know a lot of people like it, but... First off, I thought it was going to be all about microaggressions, 
And I was excited about that. And then it wasn't. It was just like the first page about my aggressions. Then it was like all about like rape. It was not intersectional at all. If you're gonna write about feminism, do your research please. Um yeah. Definitely white feminism. It was so many annoying things. Um I'll link my Goodreads review if you want to hear me rant about it. And then uh, I read yesterday The Bees by Carolyn Duffy. Uh, she was poet laureate in Britain, I think. And yeah, it's just like her collection, kind of about bees and politics and nature and stuff. And it was it wasn't like my style, but it, there was some good ones in there, and it was super British. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now because I've killed my voice and I don't know what's going on. Um, thank you for watching. Sorry if that was like really long or you couldn't hear anything I was saying. I will try to make more than just this video and another wrap. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can do that. I have some ideas and March is longer and I'll be done with school in like the second half of March. So, we'll see. But thank you for watching. Uh, sorry. Just sorry. Um, <laughs> let me know what you read in my er, February. And I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!